What's up everybody, back by popular demand. We're gonna be roasting some more Forerunners today. Uh, so you guys seem to enjoy that first video that we made. So we're gonna do it again. And let me tell you, today I've got some awesome Forerunners to show you. Uh, we've had some really cool submissions. So I'm afraid that I'm probably gonna end up being a little bit too positive on this. It's not gonna be so much of like a roast, but I just wanna share some of these cool Forerunners with you. All right, so we're gonna kick it off with Alex here. We don't wanna waste any time. Let's get right into the, the cool stuff. Okay, right off the bat, we haven't learned our lesson from last time. We're sending sideways pictures in, <laughs> but I'm gonna let it go. That was, that was a joke from the last video. We're not gonna beat a dead horse. Okay, so Alex has a facelifted fourth gen here. Looks like it's a V6, because I'm not seeing a, a V8 emblem in the, in the grill. We've got some aftermarket headlights, some very, very yellow fog lights. Yeah, what else we got going on here? Um, okay, this thing is pretty cool. Um, silver, I gotta be honest, it's not my first choice for a vehicle like this. Um, and I mean, I own a silver Tacoma, so who am I to talk, right? But uh, this one does look good. And I do like the bronze wheels on, on this color. I think that's a, a cool way to make a kind of a boring color look interesting. And uh, as a matter of fact, this wheel and tire setup looks really cool, really clean. I don't know, are those the like the newer model of methods? I don't know what the model names are, but they came out with a few new designs recently, and I like these. I like the fitment. I like whatever tires those are. They look pretty gnarly too. Um, yeah, I like it. We've got a roof rack. Uh, I'm not sure what what brand it is. Is it a Sherpa? Is it a Prince? Yeah, it's hard to tell in this picture, but got some traction boards up top in case he does something dumb. He's got an awning mounted on his, which I think is cool. I would like to do that as well with mine. My only concern is I don't know if I'll be able to clear the garage door with an awning mounted to it. It all depends on kind of how low profile it is, but he's here with a, another Forerunner. So this, I don't, we're switching to another Forerunner now. I don't know, this looks like it's more stock. This is a V8 model, it looks like, so V8 Sport model, I guess. Hauling some mountain bikes and some kayaks. It looks like he's a big outdoor guy. This looks stock. Uh, doesn't really look like there's much to talk about here. Um, looks like we got some kind of a sleeping arrangement in the back. Is there somebody in there? Is she okay? Should we check on her? Poker with a stick. I know everybody's big on like the rooftop tents and you know having a travel trailer with them. Doing all this stuff for camping. Realistically, you can sleep in the back of a Forerunner. Uh, you can fold the back seats down flat on these fourth gens, and you have a nice flat floor. Um, you can even take out the seat base of the rear seat if you want to gain like a little bit of extra foot room there. And it should be enough space for at least one, if not two adults to lay back there fairly comfortably. And it looks like Alex is taking advantage of that. And he's got like a kind of a cool lighting setup in there. Okay, this is his driveway, I guess. Is that an Acura Legend, I want to say? Or is it a, oh crap, what was the other one? Uh, the Vigor? Was it Acura Vigor? I don't know. You're gonna have to comment on this video and let me know what this car is. It looks like it's got a pretty cool wheel and tire setup on it. Um, anyways, back to the Forerunner. I, again, I really like these wheels on this thing. I think it looks like a, an updated version of the standards that I have on my Forerunner, but it's more of like a flat face spoke. And I want to say these are probably 285s on here as well, but overall, like the, the setup looks really good on this. And we're, we're back to the sleeping arrangements. He really wants to brag about his, uh, <laughs> his forerunner bed. I don't know about the safety of the light bulbs on the blanket guy. Is that really a good idea? <laughs> I'm sure he's keeping an eye on it. She seems happy, she's smiling, so. And, oh, you naughty boy. Okay, so he's been mudding too. He's not afraid to use this thing off-road, obviously, which is good. Yeah, crappy picture, looks like a fun time. And to round it off here, yeah, he's got his bikes loaded up on the on the lifted Forerunner. Looks good, I'm gonna give that a seven and a half out of 10. Moving on. Okay, up next, we're moving on to Cody. What do you know, another fourth gen Forerunner. Like, you guys know that the other generations of Forerunner can take part in this as well, right? Like, it's not, this is not a fourth gen only. <laughs> But I'm happy to see the fourth gens. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased towards them. I love seeing what everybody else is doing with theirs. And in this case, with Cody's Forerunner, what he's doing is not a whole lot. But I, I don't mean anything negative with that because I think the fourth gen Forerunner is a great vehicle right out of the box. They they did an awesome job on these, and they really don't need much to be awesome SUVs. I think one thing I'm seeing here, and the more I see it, 
the more I'm really developing a thing for it is these fifth gen TRD Pro wheels on a fourth gen. I think it looks so good. And Cody's Forerunner here is a perfect example of that. It looks like it's otherwise stock. I mean, it looks like stock height, so has the running boards, mud flaps, tires don't look too huge. But those wheels really bring it up. Like over the factory fourth gen wheels, it just, it's really a nice upgrade, I think. Here he's showing off his, uh, what seems to be a completely rust-free undercarriage. Good for you, Cody. I hope you're proud of yourself. I'm gonna go cry in the corner now with my Ontario Canada Forerunner. Looks like the bottom of the dang Titanic underneath it. Man, if this thing doesn't rust, it is gonna last you a very long time. That's for sure, we all know that. We got another picture of the same picture. <laughs> same angle, same truck. Well, he's got a bike rack on it now though. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, but again, it just looks stock. Looks very simple. No like appearance only modifications, you know what I mean? Like non-functional stuff. Another side shot. Side shot Cody, okay. He's, uh, <laughs> he's like uh, the, uh, the girls on Instagram that you look at their grid and they take a picture from the same angle of their face every single time and you see the one picture on the other side and they got a big freaking mole or bah! I don't know what your passenger side looks like Cody but I hope it doesn't have a huge mole on it. From this angle I can tell the paint could use a little bit of work. It's uh, pretty scratched up. Most Forerunner owners don't care about this kind of stuff. I think I'm kind of a unique case. I'm not sure what we're looking at here. Uh, I guess just that he converted to LED in the rear hatch maybe. He's got some cool stickers. I don't know. And then for the final picture it looks like he's upgraded his head unit. And I think that's, is it a, yeah, it's a Pioneer unit, but it's one of those ones that kind of like sticks out. And I don't know how to feel about that because the one that I have in my Forerunner, one of my biggest complaints is that the screen is so small because of the shape of the, the hole in the dash. There's kind of only so much you can do with it. So this is one way that you can get a bigger size screen, but it just looks kind of like an afterthought then. It kind of looks like you have a tablet or something just super glued to your dash. So. I guess it depends on what your priority is, if you want a bigger screen or if you want like an OEM style look. But I can understand why he would go with this one. It looks like he's using uh, Android Auto in it. I think Cody's Forerunner is a great example of the top two things that you need to do to a stock Forerunner to make it somewhat modern and completely usable. Upgrade the stock tires because the stock tires sucked on all models. They're all like car tires. And update the head unit if you want more modern uh, bells and whistles. That's it. Uh, round of applause for Cody, keeping it simple. I think we can all respect a, a nice clean kind of an OEM build like that. I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. Okay, moving on to Dean Green, except it's Grain, Gran, his last name, I don't know. Sorry, Dean, but uh, <laughs> okay, this is, but essentially what Dean has here is a trophy truck with a forerunner body on it. And this is insane. It's insane. We've got a solid axle swapped on the front with huge king shocks. Um, I don't know if those, are they 37 inch tires maybe? They're gigantic. I'm gonna say that this is uh, like a king of the hammers style build. It looks like that's kind of like the, the environment that he's driving in and stuff, but I, I can't, no words for this. This is insane. This, <laughs> this is so far from a stock fourth gen. He's got fiberglass fenders up front. He's got a dang exhaust outlet behind the rear door on the side. That, this is crazy. The dude looks like a fighter pilot driving this thing with a freaking headset on. This is not, I can't imagine what this thing is capable of. I would love to see some videos of this thing. Look at it rock crawling and stuff too. So it, it's kind of interesting that it's a solid axle up front because like a lot of the, the high speed guys, they all keep the independent front suspension. And so it looks like this is kind of like a combination of a rock crawler with the crazy flex like this, but then also high speed uh, jumping capability and stuff. Looks like a very well-rounded vehicle. It looks like he has spent a ton of money on it. Look at the way that thing just squats and goes. I, I'm, Dean, you, you gotta send some videos of this thing. This is, this is so cool, man. Thanks for sending it in. I think uh, there is more than likely not another fourth gen forerunner on this planet exactly the same as this one. This is a very unique build. Just for the creativity and the fact that it's like so over the top, I'm gonna give this a nine and a half out of 10. And also I wanna let you know that you're a madman. <laughs> okay, moving on to DJ here. This looks like a very, very clean build actually. Um, 
we've definitely got some uh, heavy duty bumpers on this, both front and rear. Um, are those, I think it looks like SCS wheels, or were they the SR7 or something? Um, can't tell what size those are. Those look pretty similar to mine, 285s maybe. This is sitting fairly high. I want to know, maybe there's a body lift on this as well. Just because of, I don't know, my spidey senses are tingling. I think it might have a bit of a body lift as well. Uh, this looks like a beefcake, man. This is a, a pretty serious looking setup you got here. That front bumper is no joke. I mean, uh, that's some good protection. We got the winch in it. Um, looks good. On second thought, I'm going to say these these tires are way bigger than 285s. These, these look like a 35s or something like that. They're a lot wider than I was expecting from the side. Um, again, silver is not my number one color, but it looks good. I don't know what's going on with the black gas door, if that's on purpose, or if you were missing one, you had to buy one from a black 4Runner, you just haven't painted it. I'm kind of getting like high schooler wrap different parts with carbon fiber vinyl vibes from it, but I understand if there's a reason for it. Um, kind of sticks out though, we can be honest, it, it sticks out. This rear bumper, I'm not sure what brand this is. There's a guy that I see on Instagram, he's getting his stuff shared all the time where it's like popping up in my explore page. I think it's Nguyen Works or something, I think he's from California, it looks like he's doing a lot of like rear bumper uh, projects for 4Runner owners and with the tire carrier and stuff on it, but it's a, like a very clean, kind of a low profile, almost like an OEM shape look. But I think that's the way to go. I would like to see it with a spare mounted. I think that would really complete like what the end result is gonna look like here. Uh, we've got some Icon coilovers it looks like. I'm not sure like which stage or which model those are, but um, definitely high quality stuff. Total Chaos upper control arms. Looks good. Looks like uh, he spent a lot of money on this. This winch cable though, is that supposed to be hanging down like that? I, I feel like that would be like swinging and, and clanking like uh, a 90 year old man in the gym locker room. But uh, yeah, it looks good. He's, uh, this thing is ready for adventure and it looks like it's well built. I'm gonna give it an 8.2 out of 10, just because I don't like to follow rules even when they're my own. All right, now we're moving on to Ethan, and we just have a few of what kind of looks like the same picture. So he's got the TRD Pro Style uh, grill up front with the Raptor lights, and I cannot knock the Raptor lights. Everybody knows I had them on mine for a little while. They're gone, but yeah, to each his own. I decided that they're not for me, but I don't hate other people for having them. We'll just leave it there. It's got a light bar in the front bumper and the grill, like a stealth mounted one, which is cool. Looks like, are they aftermarket headlights? I can't quite tell, or if they're just painted black. Might be OEM ones with the housings painted black. Let's see some other pictures here. This is uh, either stock, right? It almost looks like it's lowered from this angle. Is this like a, a two wheel drive model or something? I don't know. This wheel gap on the front tire seems low, but maybe it's just because I'm comparing to the last few submissions that were all like pretty jacked up. Uh, I don't know, but it's kind of an interesting look from this angle to have kind of like a, a lower stance. It almost makes it look a little beefy, kind of like, a, you know, the first gen SRT8 Jeep Grand Cherokees. They were just kind of boxy and low as like a bulldog. It kind of reminds me of that, but we've got some uh, super glary HID or LED light bulbs in this thing. Uh, I'm not going to complain about them through pictures and video like people in some of my videos do because... If you haven't seen them in real life, you haven't seen nothing. That's my theory about that. So um, They might not glare at all. I'm just pointing that out. Uh, so basically we've got the same angle of a few different shots here. He's got the TRD Pro wheels, the fifth gen wheels on this as well. Because of the lighting, you can't really see them as much. So I can't like really appreciate them as much as on the other vehicles that have them. But I do like them. I always, as I've just stated, I like them. Always a good look on these 4Runners. Um, not much else to look at here. It's otherwise pretty much stock, so I'm going to give that a 6.5 out of 10. Alright, moving on, we have Ethan number 2. And that's Ethan number 2 because the last dude was named Ethan 2. Um, as far as who's number 1 and who's number 2, I think we should probably just put the both of you in a cage and just see who dies first and let you guys sort it out. Anyways, Ethan number 2 here is obviously a big fan of Shadow Puppets. And his forerunner is as well. Um, all kidding aside, this is this looks pretty cool. It's um, 
So we have a pre-facelifted model. Um, I'm not sure which wheels those are. Looks like the kind of standard setup, I think. Um, again, I can't quite tell in this picture if those are stock upper control arms or not. Um, hard to tell in this picture. Let's move on to something else. Oh, okay, here's a more zoomed out shot. Um, he's doing some mall crawling here, boy. Look at that, he's on a loading dog. Watch out, everybody. This guy's a hardcore wheeler. Um, okay, from this angle, it looks like we've got like a more of a mild tire setup here. Um, are these 265s maybe? I don't know. And also a not very aggressive sidewall on them either. There's no big lugs on the side. So here's the thing. Maybe I'm getting old. I don't know. But um, this kind of a tire setup is not going to necessarily get you likes on Instagram, right? It's not going to make you famous. It's not going to get people's attention and get compliments. But in terms of functionality, I can see the draw. I know that the uh, the Eliminator X trails that we have on the Tacoma, I'm running a 265 on on those, and that it's kind of like a BFG KO2 where it doesn't have like a super aggressive sidewall. It's got some lugs on there, but nothing crazy. Not like with the Duratrax on the on the Forerunner, um, and it's a little less aggressive of a tread pattern. It actually looks very similar to these. I don't know if these are Coopers or or Generals. I don't know, but like they have a lot of siping and not huge big tread blocks on them, and they might not look as exciting, but I find it's nice and quiet on on the highway. I can see the draw in these kind of less aggressive, narrower tire. He's gonna get good fuel economy with this. Uh, anyways, I'm going on and on about nothing really, but um, the lights up top here, maybe not my first choice. They really do stick up, and I would imagine you're probably gonna get a lot of wind noise and stuff from that, but. Um, they probably put out a lot of a lot of high quality light though too. So um, I guess we're switching to another Forerunner now. We have got some some ditch lights on this thing. Kind of cool. Never really understood how uh, helpful ditch lights really are in the real world. I've never had them on any vehicles. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, should I? Is it worth installing them? I don't know. We got some aftermarket headlights here again. I don't know if I'm a fan of like the LED light bar on the bottom of these. I think, I understand that it's supposed to make it look a little bit more modern, but it's kind of like riding a fine line with looking cheesy with when you try to make things modern. I don't know, I'm kind of undecided. Some angles I like them, sometimes I don't, but uh, looks like he's spent some time on his, his lighting setup on this one, on the white one. Uh, if you remember my previous video, I got a thing for white 4th Gen foreigners. There's just something about them I think is just so beautiful. Um, yeah, looks like he's doing some exploring in the snow. Yeah, okay. Sir, nice try. That's a Tacoma with a cap on it. That's not a Forerunner. I'm not stupid. I'm not falling for it. Also a Tacoma. Also a Tacoma. Okay. Somebody doesn't like to play by the rules. But you know what? Actually, <laughs> let's take a look at the Tacomas real quick because obviously I'm into them as well. Um, this thing looks pretty cool. We got like a little hidden winch up front. We got some, I guess this is the Tacoma owner version of Raptor lights. They always put four in the Tacomas instead of three. I don't know what that's all about. Um, these aftermarket headlights, I think I like these more than the ones on the Forerunner. These just look a little bit more kind of natural, I guess. I don't know. Um, we've got some aftermarket fog lights in the stock bezels, which I really like that. I think that's a really clean way of doing that. So that's cool. Looks like he's got some sliders on here. He drives it in the rain. Way to go. Uh, and here he is wheeling with his buddy. Yeah, I have to say, these are some, both actually, some some really nice Tacomas. I like it. I'm not sure what the wheel and tire setup is here. It's got the PAP cap. Not the coolest looking thing sometimes, but definitely functional if you need like some weatherproof storage space. Um, his buddy's got a Thule rooftop tent on a rack out back here. Yeah, looks like a, a pair of good looking Tacomas. Um, I don't know how to rate this. You're just giving me three different vehicles, so. I'm giving you two Forerunners and a Tacoma out of 10. Do what you want with that. All right, up next, we've got Gadog. G-A Dog. G-A Dog. What has he got? A fourth gen Forerunner. Well, I haven't seen one of those yet. This one looks pretty nice. The picture's kind of blurry. So it's another silver one, but you know, for some reason, 
kind of liking this one in silver. I don't know, I can't really put my finger on what it is that, maybe it's just this camera angle with the wheel set up. I don't know. I like it. Raptor lights, LED fog lights, LED or HID headlights, I'm not sure what's going on there. So we have the TRD Pro grill, but it's unpainted. And this is what my problem was before I painted mine too. It just looks a little bit too, again, I want to use the term like high schooly, where uh, you're just trying to make it look modified, not necessarily making it look better, I think. And don't take that the wrong way, it looks good. Um, all I'm saying is that I think if you were to paint match that the same way that I did, it would really tie it in because right now you just have a big black blob on the front of an otherwise all silver vehicle. It just stands out a little bit too much. Some people that's the look they're going for, but um, something to consider. I don't know. It's up to you, of course. You might like it that way and there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, another angle. I'm getting dizzy here, buddy. Yeah, we gotta do something about these headlights. They're looking a little weathered by the UV rays up top here. They're, they're looking pretty yellow. You can, you can restore those really easily. I find these Forerunner headlights are pretty pretty darn easy to restore. I've done mine a couple times, and uh, they respond really well to it, even when they're pretty bad looking, so something to look into. Looks like we've got some paint peeling on the front bumper. Um, I would probably be focusing on that next before any other kind of aftermarket mods. I'd be wanting to kind of clean up the overall condition of this because it looks like, aside from that, the rest of this Forerunner is in pretty nice shape. Um, couple of scuffs on the back bumper, but hey, who doesn't park by feel every once in a while, right? We're all guilty of it. Um, we got the American flag sticker on the back window, so everybody knows you're American. Okay. It's interesting that it doesn't have a trailer hitch on the back. I don't know if I've ever seen a fourth gen that doesn't have a trailer hitch. At least if it does, I can't see it there, but I don't know if... I thought they all had the tow package, but maybe I just learned something. And we've got no spoiler on the rear either, so... Kind of a plain Jane model, but it looks good. I like it. I'm gonna give it a six and a half out of 10. Fix your headlights and paint your bumper. All right, now we're moving on to Gus. This thing looks very clean and very well cared for. This looks like it's been freshly detailed, very shiny, very well looked after. It looks good. Um, we got the bull bar holding the light bar. I don't know. I. I'm not a fan of the bull bars. I think they're kind of cheap, kind of old school looking. However, if you want to mount a light bar for functional lighting and you don't want to cut up your front bumper grill and stuff, although in these facelifted models like mine, you can actually pop that plastic grill out of the front bumper. It just clips in, you don't have to cut anything. Um, so yeah, I think if this is kind of the best solution that you come up with for mounting your light, I get it. Kind of hurts your ground clearance. Kind of looks like your foreigner's got a Jay Leno chin, um, but and that's kind of a personal preference thing. Um, we've got an OEM grill, which I think is starting to become a little bit rare. Everybody is getting these TRD Pro lookalike grills nowadays, including myself, and uh, it's getting to the point where a nice, clean, color-matched OEM grill is starting to stand out, and I like it. With the blacked-out emblem, I, I think it's a good look. He's got his own little extra emblem mounted here. Got some yellow fog lights, looks good. Again, with the same aftermarket headlights. I'm kind of undecided, I don't know. Um, looks like he's got a fairly decent sized lift with a somewhat narrow tire on some OEM wheels. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, those are the OEM limited wheels. Um, looks like they're either painted or maybe plasti dipped or powder coated black. I think it actually looks pretty good. I'm not normally a fan of like painted factory wheels in most cases, um, but I kind of like this. I think. I think you're pulling it off pretty well, and uh, it definitely fits with the whole like murdered out look that you got going on here. We're going to call this thing criminal spec, I think. That's a criminal spec forerunner. Up top here, check this out. We got visors on visors. <laughs> this guy wants to get every ounce of fuel economy he can possibly get back after adding that roof rack. So he's shooting it off the edge of the moonroof, up under the fairing on the front of the basket, and up over top. And I don't know if that works or not, but... It's uh, creative. Got a sideways picture here. Let's flip it over. Kind of the same angle. Um, not sure if there's anything else to see here. Is it actually shadow gray? I thought it was black in the previous pictures, but it might be the same color as mine. Yeah, I don't know what the suspension setup is on this, but it looks like it's sitting pretty high. Um, and then combined with kind of a 
maybe a mild tire size. Gives you a little extra gap in the fenders. But yeah, it looks good. I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10. Good looking, well cared for fourth gen. Now on to Haze. What do we got here? Cool looking sky, that's for sure. Okay, we're back to TRD Pro style grills, people. <laughs> the thing is like, I, I think it does look really good on these fourth gens. I think it suits the, the body lines and it suits the style of the front end. So uh, I got no problem with it. And his is also unpainted. I think that's kind of what separates the men from the boys. Anybody can just buy one of these in ABS plastic and bolt it on. If you go the extra mile to actually pay a body shop to color match it and paint it for you, or you end up like me and you just spray paint it like a total hack and call it good enough. Um, I just think when they're painted, it looks more complete. It looks like you've gone the extra mile. But I will say on the darker colored forerunners like these, it's not as noticeable when it's unpainted. Not like the silver one where it's like, it's clear as day that it's a silver vehicle with a black panel on it. You can pull it off on a darker color like this. So that's fine. Um, good looking front bumper on here. Um, I like it, it's kind of like a low profile look and a different style of aftermarket headlights here. It looks like they got like the halo rings on them. I hope you didn't wire those in because those just look awful when they're turned on. It's like nothing says my parents donated this base model 20 year old BMW to me so I can look cool in college than <laughs> aftermarket halos. I don't know where I'm going with that. Don't listen to me guys. Okay, we've got an exhaust cutout here. You're doing some stuff. This, actually, you know what? All of these exhaust pipes look brand new with all these clamps and everything. So I'm gonna say this has a complete exhaust system on it. Um, I think that's kind of cool to do an electric cutout on a Japanese SUV that so many people still are not even aware that was offered with a V8 from the factory. You get, all these American car guys that are talking about our Toyotas being built with chopsticks and stuff. Am I allowed to say that if it's a compliment? And yet they're driving around in Dodge Dakotas with V6s and stuff. And these forerunners have like beefy V8s out of pickup trucks. Like who's, who's more manly? This would be fun to be able to open this up and shut the rednecks up and just, uh, cause I mean the 4.7 is a great sounding engine. That's for sure. And it looks like it doesn't stop there. This guy has got some, Doug Thorley headers on here. They look brand new because uh, the coating does not last looking like that for very long, at least not in my experience. Uh, they hold up fine, but they just, they get stained pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, his look pretty new. He's got no uh, splatter shields on there. I don't know if he's planning on putting them back on. If he's just like, showing off for the picture or not. You might want to put those back on and try and save these headers for as long as you can. Um, I can't quite tell, but I think if I was a gambling man, I would bet that these are the long tubes just because of the way that they're sitting in there. Um, so if that's the case, we're talking probably full cat delete and aftermarket Y pipe and then the cutout. This thing's a hot rod. This is a very unsuspecting vehicle for people that wouldn't think a, a Toyota 4Runner has a V8 in it. I bet this thing sounds amazing. Um, factory running board still, interesting choice. It's lifted. Again, 5th gen TRD Pro wheels looks awesome. Got some Toyo tires. So we've got some uh, some high quality kind of brand name parts on this build, which is good to see. And again, just checking out the stance in this picture. It, it looks good. It, it's sitting right. I think uh, you've done a great job with this. I would maybe consider, if it's legal in your state, tinting these front windows to match the, the side windows. I think that's a great way to tie in, like kind of like the dark look here. Gives you a little more privacy too if you're like at a red light, you're picking your nose, and don't tell me you don't do it. But yeah, this, uh, I guess that's pretty much all we got to see here. Pretty much the same camera angle a few times. Uh, yeah, good looking truck. I'm gonna say seven and a half. No, you know what? This thing probably sounds crazy. Eight out of 10. All right, guys, last but not least, we have one more submission here. Uh, this is Hudson. So Hudson is doing some mud in here, and uh, yeah, that's gonna be a pain to clean up, man. That kind of clay just gets everywhere and it's hard to scrub off. So it's a 4.7 V8 here. We've got a K&N intake. Um, you've all seen my previous video about the K&N stuff. Some people got like really upset about that. <laughs> what is this sticker here? Oh, you know what this is? This is uh, the date and mileage for his timing belt replacement. So 
What you have here, ladies and gentlemen, is a responsible fourth gen Forerunner owner. He's on top of things. Realistically, aside from cracked exhaust manifolds, that is the only downside to the 4.7 V8. Everything else about it is just, it's still one of my favorite engines I think ever made. It's just so good in every way. Yes, it's thirsty. Who cares? It's reliable. Yes, you gotta do a time belt. Who cares? It's every 100,000 miles. Like how often are you gonna do that? Anyways, looks like he's looking after it. Um, okay, a couple things here. I can't say I'm a big fan of the wheel and tire choice. We've got kind of like low profile tires and the wheel, maybe not for me. I think uh, it's a little busy, but if that's, I mean, if that's your style, go for it, it's cool. The stance looks pretty good, but low profile off-road tires, like not like super low profile, it's not like they're like super stretched or something, but I'm more of a fan of like the smaller wheel, taller tire, uh, that's just me. Looks like he's got some nice shiny black paint, um, but what's really standing out to me here is it looks like he really uses his forerunner. Like he's towing a trailer here with, I don't know what he's got on here. What, what are you hauling, buddy? What are you hauling? Some grass or hay or something? Weeds? I don't know. I'm not a farmer. But anyways, it's cool to see him using it for what it's meant for. And in the previous picture, he was off-roading with it, which is awesome. Here he's towing a trailer with it, which is awesome. He's really like putting the utility in SUV. And I have a lot of respect for that because in my city, it seems like every guy my age drives a full-size pickup truck that they have never shifted into four-wheel drive. They've never even put the tailgate down or hooked a trailer hitch up to it. It's all just status symbols. And so to see somebody like uh, Hudson here kind of thinking outside the box, using a trailer and stuff to, to get a bunch of work done, I think that's uh, respectable. So good for you for, for using it like a workhorse. It's certainly tough enough to be used for work. And uh, yeah, that's cool. Um, looks like in this last picture, he's upgraded the front bumper and he's got some lighting in it and stuff. And it looks cool. You can uh, probably mount a winch to this eventually if you want to. Uh, we got the roof basket up top again. I'm not like a huge fan of those. Uh, I prefer just like the full aftermarket roof racks. But um, aside from that, I don't know what the suspension setup is on this. Looks like it's... Uh, Fairly simple build. I like the idea that you're using it. I don't like the wheels, so I'm gonna give you a seven out of 10, so that kind of balances out. Anyways, that's probably gonna do it for our latest submissions for Roast My Runner. Um, I almost don't wanna say if you want yours featured to send it to roast at canadiangearhead.com just because I'm kinda of having trouble keeping up with all these submissions, but you know what, man? Just go ahead and send them, and I'll try my best to keep up. But uh, we'll definitely be doing more of these videos as you guys continue to send them in. Uh, if you have any friends with like third gens or fifth gens, get them to send theirs in too. I just I'm not necessarily bored with the fourth gens, but I just want to be clear that I love all forerunners. I think you can't go wrong with any generation from first to fifth to whatever the heck that sixth gen is going to look like. I love them all. So. Uh, if you have friends that have a fifth gen or something like that, tell them to send it in too. I'd really like to check them out and I'm sure a lot of you guys would too. So that's all we got for this time. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you on the next video. See you. Uh.